drop down and hey, do this Testing, is Bob one, two, three. and Bob. We don't have the regular uh, floor mics, but it's above y'all. Okay. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome into Insight into Mental Health. I'm Bob the Avenue, the host and producer and owner of the show. I created it. Isn't that amazing, Richard? 14 years ago. 14 years for somebody that's been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. And yeah, God is good. And to my compadre, Richard Phelps, hey, co-host and uh, associate producer of Inside the Mental Health. Thank you for being on, Richard. Thanks, Bob. It was a long day today. I was troubleshooting a client's computer. And yeah. He taught me stuff and I taught him stuff. I've got to say about this guy with computers, man. I've never seen anybody that can touch him, you know. You know, ladies and gentlemen. Richard is good at that. And 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 tonight, uh, we were we were gonna have a guest, but they were a no show. And and tonight uh we're gonna be focusing in on my books, you know, to show the audience uh how somebody with schizophrenia which, which is one of the worst of all the mental illness. It, it, it is a cliff-hanging, heinous illness, you know, and I deal with it every day, and, and, and I do quite well dealing with it, don't you think, Richard? Well, you not only are doing bodybuilding, you've written 13 books, and do the show. That's a full plate just for each of those things alone. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, not very many shows have been on for 14 years at AOC. I can guarantee that. No, not many. Not many. And I would just like to say, uh, our friend Sudie Landry had her last, last show on AOC the other day. Uh, oh, really? Heartbeat of America, of Acadiana. Oh, I didn't know that was her last show. Yeah, that was her last show. Sudi is a wonderful lady, a loving, wonderful lady. And, we, we we say our farewells to Sudie, but me and Richard will still see her on uh, on uh, the Riders Guild, where the Riders of Lafayette meet uh, once a month. Uh, Sudie's last fabulous. Tuesday of each month, and we forgot to go to the meeting. Yeah, we Oops. did. We did. We did. Oh well, okay. Sudie, you've done a lot for the community over the many years. You're you have a lot of accolades besides volunteer liaison for AOC, um, Louisiana Heartbeats, and then there was a show for the kids that were aspiring actors and actresses. And the list just goes on and on. Yeah, Lu Lucia, uh, she's an incredible woman. Yes. And, 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 and we praise you. Uh, and we want to give thanks to Linda Moe, Bob's editor, Yes, she's another incredible woman. She's an artist, an author, and an editor. Mm -hmm. She's edited all these books, ladies and gentlemen. Almost all these books, you know. And and, and, and she had vertigo. And, and we, well, well, first of all, we're going to go for the prayers, you know. Uh, yes. Father, we come into your presence with glad tidings that... Uh, People we know are getting better. We ask for prayers for, for Linda Moe, who had vertigo, that you touch her and you heal her. And also for prayers for my sister Lisa, and also for my brother Bert, that he might find a new job. And also for another Bert, that he might be getting healed. In Jesus' name. And prayer for and, my son, he needs some assistance on his prescription meds. He got a something related to a chest cold and he's just having some struggles lately so keep him in your thoughts and prayers yes father and father give us wisdom in imparting our knowledge to the audience we know that there's a lot of hurting people especially people with mental illnesses which are uh, 10 times tougher to deal with than 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 the, your average persons so father Give us grace and glory, and, 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 and give us a good message to give to the public in Jesus. And for Lisa and her daughter and her grandson, Caden, 
and for Linda H. She's having the de uh, fighting depression and medication coverage issues and severe back pain. In your name, Lord, Amen. Thank you, Richard. Now, uh, you know, since our guests didn't show up, I figure we'll, we'll we always have a backup when a guest doesn't show up. And tonight, look, Richard got uh, an Einstein hat that our friend Gerald gave Richard, you know? It has a pic he got at the Smithsonian, and, and, and he, it has a picture of Einstein on it. That doesn't mean I'm as smart as Einstein was, but... But you're pretty smart in some ways, Richard, you know? Right, well, I, I just have a knack for fixing computers. Yeah. But knowledge to know when it's time to quit and say, well, that one's going to make a good doorstop. Yeah. Or a paperweight if it's a laptop, because yeah. sometimes they just too old. It's like an old car. Do you put good money after bad? Well, that really is a roller coaster on there. Okay. Yeah, it is. Whoa, I won't okay. go on. Be, I won't be going on those. I don't go on roller coasters. I don't like, and I don't go on Ferris wheels. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to be talking about my eight books that I wrote. I'm going to be talking about them. You know, it's, it, first of all, I would like to say I give all my grace and glory to uh, Jesus Christ who has imparted a mind that, uh, that is fogged and racing at times and anxious at times with my illness, mm -hmm. you know, with fear and anxiety to, uh, to sense, to, to having a lot of sense and being very creative in writing all these books, you know, that doesn't happen unless it's a miraculous event, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, 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 what has been your most interesting book to write, Bob? Uh, my Christian books. And my time traveler. Yeah, I like those. Yeah. Totally. A schizophrenia is a brain disorder that affects the way a person acts thinks and sees the world. People with schizophrenia have an altered perception of reality. They may see or hear things that don't ex exist, speak in strange or confusing ways, and feel like people are out to get them, which I feel a lot. Or they maybe feel like they are continually being watched. With such a blurred line between reality and imagination, it makes it, it difficult for schizophrenics to deal with everyday life. A lot of them may withdraw from the outside world with confusion and fear. On the average, schizophrenia comes out in the late teens or early 20s, hmm. which is exactly what happened to me. According to scientific theater, the theory, I have a gene in my system that predisposes me for mental illness where the chemicals in my brain, serotonin, do dopamine, norepinephrine, and oxytocin are unbalanced and cause irrational thinking. Because of the stress of military basic training, while in my early 20s, I was ripe for schizophrenia to manifest, causing me to have a nervous breakdown and get a medical discharge. Okay. Uh, uh, let me ask you, uh, Richard. Yeah. Do you want me? You think I should talk about schizophrenia tonight, or talk about my books? Both. Both. Okay. Okay. Let me. I'm. I'm going to do both, ladies and gentlemen. I've been diagnosed with schizophrenia for about fifty years, and and sometimes uh, because of my relationship with Jesus, I feel great joy, and sometimes the schizophrenia manifests. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, let me read, let me read. Mm -hmm. Schizophrenics generally have a lot of paranoia and fear, and I was no different. I was so fearful and depressed at the reception station in the Army where you were indoctrinated into the Army. I cut my wrist and was taken to the infirmary to be sewed up. Now, after going to support groups on and off for 20 years, and having met many people who would constantly cut themselves, I realized I did not want to kill myself. What I desired was for the emotional pain and feelings 
to just go away. Like all cutters who in injure themselves, they concentrate on the physical pain to relieve themselves from concentrating on the emotional pain, which does go away for a season. That is just what I did. After being sewed up and talking to doctors who gave me an okay for service, I was transported to basic training. I was still dealing with depression and fear, and because of the stress of basic training, my symptoms increased even more. We started to exercise every morning and would have PT tests to see how we were progressing. I don't remember the particulars of basic because it was over 50 years ago, but I remember being very much paranoid of everything and everybody. I started hanging around away from everyone on breaks, smoking, and that's when I got up to smoking four packs of cigarettes a day and drinking uh, Diet Coke when I could, a lot of water and Cokes. During breaks, I would get all alone outside and just smoke thinking that all the guys in my company were talking about me and didn't like me and were plotting to do something to hurt me. Interesting, huh, Richard? I can't imagine basic training, how hard that must have been. And yeah. uh, you're on strangers. Yeah. And I, were yeah. they yell did they have a drill sergeant yelling at you all the of time? Of course, of course. Right in your face? Yeah. Oh, I couldn't handle that. I start to have racing thoughts in my head. Racing thoughts are those when your mind is at full blown speed constantly, thinking of many, many things where some of the thoughts are real and some of the thoughts are off the wall <laughs> and have no realness to them. Or like the doctors call it, thoughts that are delusional, like me thinking the soldiers were really going to jump me and hurt me, which in reality wasn't true at all. It was just all in my mind and not true at all. Because of my alone behavior, the other soldiers started to resent my not being part of the crowd and started to pick on me. The basic training that soldiers go through is not only to learn trades and weapons and knowledge that the army teaches, but it but it's to teach the soldiers how to be part of a team with every so soldier looking out for their friend and teammate. Like I've got your back and you've got my back. Mm -hmm. However, with my schizophrenia, fear and depression flaring up, I def definitely didn't make the grade in being part of the company or one of the boys. Interesting. Uh, it is, and have they changed in the military, how they treat an inductee that would have mental health issues? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't have a clue. I'd be, that'd be something to research in the future, but yeah, I can only imagine how all that intensifies if you're in combat. Yeah. All yeah. the above. Yeah. We would hike seven miles every day with a full pack to the rifle range to zero ourselves, as they call it. To zero in, you had to fire your weapon at a target from a distance and you had to hit the bullseye or close to it. There were points recorded for how many hits you made and if successful you were told that you had zeroed in, meaning you had passed. Oh. The soldiers with the best marks would be trained as snipers like the great Navy SEAL sniper and war hero Chris Kyle. I did zero in but I was in such mental and emotional disarray that another time when we had marched seven miles in the rain, my illness was in full bloom and I was very depressed. A corporal saw the, the frown on my face when we were going to the rifle range and said, cheer up, it's not so bad. Hmm. Upon hearing what he said, I replied, I feel like running on the rifle range. I really don't know if I was th threatening to run on the firing range or what. I just expressed my frustration with my situation. Soon two soldiers came up to me before I went on the rifle range and relieved me of my weapon, took me under escort back to my barracks. From that time on, I wasn't allowed to carry a weapon, and my trips to the rifle range, I believe, were canceled. The other soldiers started to show resentment toward me because I went to training without my weapon. 
they really start to give me a hard time. Mm. Because I have a good heart and have never purposely tried to hurt anyone, I just shrugged off the abuse. However, because of the abuse and the physical, mental, and emotional pain, I started losing weight. I lost nearly 25 pounds, going down to 120 pounds Jeez. when I was taken to the camp, camp, connect, camp commander. Cool. The colonel I was taken to asked me a few questions about myself, which I couldn't answer, as even though I remember some of the particulars of the talk, I don't remember any of the questions he asked me, except that he, has, he said I had lost a lot of weight and looked at me with compassion and dismissed me. Wow. Shortly after that, I was shipped to a special station which had soldiers who couldn't adjust to the military. From then on, as my condition worsened, I was shipped to the military psychiatric hospital to, to await discharge from the Army. Isn't that an interesting well, story? at least they recognized you had a mental illness instead of just dismissing it and pounding all that training over and over again. I yeah. Mean, at least somebody had compassion. Yeah, back then, they didn't know what to do with mental illness, you know? They, they, back then, they thought everybody was schizophrenic. Bipolar, multiple personality disorder, all of them were schizophrenic. Yeah. They'd give them Haldol and Thorazine. Oh, I was loaded up with Haldol, Thorazine, and Melaril, you know. Uh, Didn't that make you real tired? Very tired. Like, 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 uh, hopelessly uh, retarded, you know. You just wanted to sleep all day? Yeah. That's what happened to a friend of mine recently, and they're still dissing out that Thorazine and Haldol, even now, when they've got much better modern meds for that. I don't get why some of these mental health facilities are still doing this. I don't know. It, it don't make sense. So I think hopefully we got to tell them, hey, there's a better solution than that. Yeah. We got to advocate, folks. Do you know something that's been told to be on lithium, a Thorazine, or Haldol, to what you seem to think are excessive amounts, go and ask questions. I'm yeah. serious. Yeah. We're not questioning their authority. We're just saying, is this really the best thing for that person? Yeah. I think I have mentioned my time in the hospital, and I won't go into that. I do remember when Richard Phelps, my friend, that's you, and co-host of my TV show, we're at... Oh, we got a phone we got call. A call. Okay. I don't know what button to push. I got it. Okay. Yes, caller? Hey, guys, it's Bert. Hi, Bert. Hey, How Bert. are you? How are you enjoying my story, Bert? I love it. I'm glad to hear that you're, you're doing much better. You're I'm doing a lot better, Bert. I'm doing really well. So am I, I, I do very well with my therapy sessions with Dr. Lagarde. That's good. Oh, That's good. good. Excuse me a minute. I'm, I'm taking huge strides to improve my mental health and have an inner peace. That's great, Bert. And it's all Jesus Christ that gives you your inner peace, so, besides the medication. That's right. And and and, and, and me alone. Yeah. And and that's why I'm such a proponent of spirituality. Yes. Because if it wouldn't be for my friend Mike Fusely introducing me to the Lord uh, tw 27 years ago, uh, I'd either be dead from smoking so much. I was smoking four packs of cigarettes a day for 20 years when mm -hmm. I met him. Or I'd be sitting in a rocking chair Rocking back and forth, looking at a wall in a mental institution. You know, Bert? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would strongly recommend prayer and therapy, counseling. Talk to somebody. Yeah, yeah. talk to somebody. You know. And how's and your mom? Don't give up. How's your mom doing? Doing better. She's healing, but not as fast as I thought it would be, but it would, it would take some time. Okay. Yeah. And Mike, she, do you have a hobby a that you do? What's that? Do you have a hobby you like to do? Painting or hiking or walking or something? He likes yes, to go I to do. watch hockey games on TV. I know Bert likes that. 
Do you like to go out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Louisiana drillers, too. I love to go there. To the what? I love to go to the Louisiana drillers hockey games, too. Okay. Where, where is that team at? That's in uh, Lafayette on uh, Johnson Street where Planet Ice is. Oh, I didn't know. Well, thanks for telling us, Bert. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you like I'm to the walk? Don okay. We'll have to mm -hmm. check that out, Bob. Yeah. And Bert, be great. what do you think yeah. about the Blues winning the Stanley Cup? Wow, that was that was nice. Very first time for them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was just like for the Dallas Stars to win, but they did it already, so. Yeah. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you see, Bert, I, I have, I'll listen to uh, uh, sports radio on my car, you know, and, and, and uh, Pharrell, uh, Pharrell, uh, Pharrell, I listen to him, you know, he's a talk radio host, and, and I listen to what those guys say and how they follow the games and everything, you know, and, and I can't believe these guys are sports junkies, you know. They know about all kinds of sports from uh, basketball, football, track and field, uh, hockey, uh, uh, horse racing, everything. You know, they, they, they bet on all that, you know. It's amazing how much knowledge they have about sports, you know. But uh, Yes, indeed. Yeah. I also have a habit of uh, watching game shows, too, at, and uh, mm -hmm. this program, of course. Yes. Thank you, Bert. Great. That's the music, too. I love that. I love music, too. What, what kind, of, kind of music do you like, Bert? Mostly gospel and uh, country. Okay. Um, okay. Every, everything except for heavy metal. Okay. Yeah, I don't I like listen that. to heavy metal. I like to listen to classic rock. And good Christian music, you know. Yes, I like that too. But Bert, oh, well. you sound good, man. You sound yeah, you good. Sound upbeat. I'm making progress. That's good. You that, know, yeah. One day at a time. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. You know. Yes. Thank you, Bert. Uh, I miss Jamie Blue and. Yeah, I miss Jamie. Yeah, Jamie was the guy. Richard knew Jamie Bert. You know that. You, uh, yeah. You know, Jamie, ladies and gentlemen, Jamie was the guy who I started the show with, you know. Bert helped us yeah. get named the name of the show back in the day, you know. And and Jamie passed away uh, about 10 years ago, huh, Richard? Yeah, 2010, yeah, 18, years ago, 18 yeah. years ago. And Jamie was my compadre, you know, before Richard. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know. Uh, we used to barbecue yeah. in the backyard. And yeah. He would do all kinds of things on the computer that it wasn't supposed to be able to do, and he would do it. Bert, you remember coming to my house back then for the meals? Oh, yes. No, we I would all, after, after a show, we would all, me, us, and all our friends, we'd get together at my house and we'd cook a meal. My friend Keith, Keith Guidro would fry fish, or we would cook meat, or whatever, you and know. And you'd do the best French fries. I'll do the best mm -hmm. French fry. Yeah, good French fry. Somebody made the ribeyes. Yeah, probably Keith. Keith yes. Keithroy. Keith yes. Keithroy is a stand-up guy, class act guy. You know, we we met we me, me and Richard and Bert have met some stand-up guys in our mm -hmm. journey with ALC and through this life. You know. And there's a Chico Men's mm -hmm. Retreat, I think, coming up in July or August. In August. There's August. A, a, a Mike Fuselage. Chico Men's Retreat. Mike, Mike is a guy that led me to the Lord 27 years ago when I, I was hurting so bad. I was a, the joke of the town. Women laughed at me. People laughed at me. People, and they knew I was scared, you know, with the fear of schizophrenia, and they would intimidate me. And my dad had nothing to do with me and was always fussing at me because he knew he, he could get away with it. Right, you, know? you would push your buttons in other yeah. words. Yeah. yeah, 
You know, I, I've been, you know, I don't know if you, I've been through a lot of abuse, but ladies and gentlemen, you know, a lot, we've all been through a lot of abuse, you know. We have all yeah. been broken hearted by somebody mm -hmm. that we trusted. We have all, a lot of us have been abandoned by somebody we loved. A lot yeah. of us have been betrayed by people we love. You know, it, it, the whole spectrum, we all have, have a lot of that in common. And, and I would like to say that if, if you're out there all alone and you have been hurt unjustly, and it's an unjust world, and you don't believe that there's a God and, and that anybody loves you, which I still go through, just ask him to show you that he's real. And most certainly Jesus Christ will show you that he's real. I guarantee Amen. you. I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, yes, Lucy. Indeed. Okay. Okay. Bert, thank you, I'll brother. Guys, hey, okay. Bert, have you heard of the Bill Gaither trio? I think so, yeah. yeah they're good. Yeah. Check them out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Bert. All right. Now, before we go on, I would like to ask our beautiful and lovely director, Lucy Fournette, to come tell she went to Seattle for the NAMI National Alliance for the Mentally Ill. Y'all can see how beautiful she is in her red dress, and she can tell y'all what she, what she experienced. It's every year NAMI has, uh, goes to a different state to, uh, to do workshops on the different mental illness programs. So, Lucy. Oh. Yeah, it, everything, uh, it was amazing because um, I didn't want to go because I was afraid I'd have to stay in a room by myself and it ended up that one, another lady, Claire Delcom, who's a, a facilitator, we ended up sharing the same room, so it, it worked out perfectly. That's um, awesome. You know, the flight there and running around the hotel like we were crazy, <laughs> going upstairs, downstairs, <laughs> and everywhere in wow. between, and you know, it was pretty neat. And wow. There were so many people, uh, I heard between 1,800 and 2,000 people were there. Wow, but wow. It did, you didn't notice it because there was, we were so spread out. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, and and I guess there was so much activity, right. you didn't have time to think no, anything. No time. You just went through the motions right. of losing. Yeah, I think the hardest thing was, was let's say, um, the meeting from 1 to 2.15, you have your time block. And they might have had four or five other meetings all going on at the same time and it's wow. to decide mm -hmm. which, one to, which one to go to and which one would be better and that that was the hardest part for us yeah <laughs> you know it's it was kind of a hard decision you know there were so many good topics and what was the best topic you see one of the one of the topics you, you um, I guess the the one I liked was um was the one they had on uh, methadone. methadone. I got to understand more about it and how it's you know given for for uh, people whose addictions. It's to help with the pain. Mm -hmm. It's not to get them, not to cure them. It's just to help them. Mm -hmm. help to withdraw pain. Right. Okay. Exactly. And That's interesting. I never knew. I never knew that. It's you know. Wow. What so about what were one of the other interesting classes you took? Uh, they had one. Uh, let's say um, it was um, was basically the police officers being trained, uh, having classes with uh, peer support people, mm. and kind of understanding how we feel and you know how we go through. Uh, our mental challenges in a day and it, it helps them to understand you know yeah this person needs the hospital but no this one really needs jail so it really you yeah. know it, it, it trains them to know how to decipher right exactly were yeah. there some officers there well they had officers but, but uh, from different states it's Good. like they had people from everywhere and uh, it was so funny um, being from Louisiana, we have our flat land, you know, I tell yeah. people flat. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's like our 
high hotel, uh, Hilton Towers, 15 floors, and we were staying at the Hyatt Regency of uh, 45 floors, wow. and wow. our room was on 36. Wow. <laughs> so it's like wow. we left our window open, didn't have to worry about peeping toms, and then we were, <laughs> we were peeking at everybody, uh, all the other buildings, but uh, it was kind of interesting. Did y'all did y'all listen to any authors or y'all saw any no, authors? No, none. Okay. And okay. they had a whole bunch of like vendor booths, but because we only had like thirty minutes between meetings, I might have went through a fourth of them. Wow. And um, I mean, they had so many, and mm -hmm. it, it was interesting, and all the food that um, we had two free. Uh, dinner meals and then mm. we had a banquet at the end more food <laughs> Wow! <laughs> and so it was pretty neat and, and your hotel was nice oh it was heavenly it's <laughs> I fell in love with that pillow <laughs> <laughs> was it was that one of the best room hotel rooms you've ever been in yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> Wow! Mm -hmm. and tell them about the Nami walk you took yeah in, in the mornings uh, about 7 a.m. Um, Everybody would meet downstairs, and we'd go for a little walk. Wow. <laughs> and the first day we went for a little walk, and <laughs> they said, oh, it's a 30-minute round trip. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> we walked basically downhill, <laughs> and we were, I think, Pike's, Pipes something. Pike Place Market. Yeah, right there. And we got there, no problem. It's like, okay, now time to go back. And, and you had to walk up <laughs> We had to walk uphill. Oh, yeah. And it was funny. Uh, <laughs> I, I ended up being part of the last of the groups, and we were teasing each other. Who wants to call an Uber? <laughs> <laughs> Did <laughs> you like, see them throw the fish at Pike Place Market? No, they were closed. Did so. you go to the original Starbucks? No. Oh, darn. I no. did. Way back but, in the day. But you had fun, huh? Oh, yes. And... Um, I think of all this, um, you know, I had Claire by me, so we helped each other. And we had the Sunday that we were supposed to come back, a challenge for both her <coughs> and me. I ended up catching a virus, and when we get to the uh, airport <laughs> in Seattle, seeing all these people, I caught a panic attack yeah. on top of it. And, wow. you know, my head spinning, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> So they said I couldn't fly. Wow. So Claire had to go on, and they sent me to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. And after my little trip, my stay there, I had to, like, pull up my big girl panties <laughs> and uh, get a ride back to the uh, airport, reschedule my flight from Seattle to Dallas, and then get in Dallas and find out, oh, Every flight's canceled because of the bad weather. Mm -hmm. Then getting a shuttle from there to another hotel, staying the night in a shuttle back, mm -hmm. <laughs> getting wow. on a plane and coming home. Mm -hmm. And I never thought I could do it, but I did. Okay. <laughs> and you met Claire at the airport. Yeah, and Claire was the first person I saw when I got off the plane. And <laughs> now Claire is another facilitator for NAMI. Another beautiful lady like Lucy, sweet girl, and I'm I'm sure y'all made a good team over there. Oh yeah, it was it was great, you know. I'm glad. We, I'm glad you we know, helped each other. It's it's just it's just coincidental <laughs> that y'all were both chosen and y'all yeah. knew each That's other. Good. You know, exactly. That's God. That's God. Yeah, because when I put my name in the hat, it's like I knew I had gone to uh, one night in Baton Rouge for a overnight stay in a hotel and <laughs> I had to call home and stay on the phone like for about an hour. Uh, I'm having a panic attack. Wow. <laughs> and that was like in our neighborhood. So knowing that I'd be so far away when I found out Claire was going, it was like, I, kept, I said, let's share That's room. <laughs> That's God. So, That's God. Yeah, exactly. He, I think God God had his hand in this yes. from from the beginning and yes. and I the more I look at it the more I think he wants me to be a counselor and I yeah. think I'm that's what I want. 
<laughs> Go for it. Well, I'd like to say uh, Lucy's brilliant. Me and Rich, Lucy and Richard took a peer support course uh, with, uh, and, and we all passed. And Lucy had the highest grade in the class. She had a, a, a 99.9 percentage. So Lucy's brilliant, a uh, Richard. She aced it. She aced it, yeah. So, you know, I, I say go for it, Lucy. Oh, yeah. You know, you do well, You'll do you it. know. You'll do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's where I need to be. Yeah. And we're also so. taking some continuing education mm -hmm. units that I just found out today. They will let us take their past webinars so hmm. we're not messed up on that conflict that we were going to have. but And there's a group in Baton Rouge. I can't remember their name right now, but there's a group of peer support specialists that are trying to solve some chronic mental health issues, especially in the uh, correctional facilities. And then I got an email from Sandy, and she hmm. had some good ideas in that email that we'll talk about later. Okay. Yeah. And well, thank Lucy. you, Sandy. Thank you, girl. Oh, it, it went awesome. I'm glad. Oh, speaking of that, there's a Schizophrenia Schizophrenia Alliance support group tomorrow morning at nine o'clock a.m. at the Extra Mile Lay Ball Ms. Ami Center at six one six Stewart. If you start at the Borden's Ice Cream Parlor. Go east about nine blocks toward Pinhook and hang a left on East Taft off of Jefferson. Go about a block and a half and you're going to see the parking lot mm -hmm. for the Extra Mile Activity Center. You're going to see a wheelchair ramp on the right and stairs on the left. That's where you go, nine o'clock to ten o'clock. It's moderated by Sandy Demeterchik. I'm learning how to pronounce her last yeah, name she right. Has a hard name to pronounce. <laughs> but her one of her uh, ancestors makes beautiful Ukrainian Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. That's her ancestor. Mm -hmm. Thank oh. you, Richard. Oh. Right. Thank you, Lucy. You want to say? Um, you want to talk? One thing, um, if you can uh, talk about is okay. I'm a new writer. Um, mm -hmm. How do you start? What What's you know the basics of you know? Okay, you. Well, pen and paper. Um, yeah, you get yeah. pen and paper, yeah. and you start off uh, by talking about yourself. You know, like like you might start off with, uh, "My name is Lucy Fournette. I was born in Lafayette at such and such an age," and and talk about your early childhood, right. and and how how your thoughts and personality mm -hmm. form, you know? Oh, okay. That's that's a good that's yeah. a good basis yeah. to start off yeah. a book, you know? And then you can go from there, like things that you were interested right. in, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and like you took karate, you know, how you took karate <laughs> and, and, and uh had how you you got married and got pregnant. <laughs> start start talking about your life like right. that, Lucy. Yeah. And I think I'll think it'll be an interesting yeah. story. And and you can also I can hook you up with my friend the Linda Mo who's yeah. my editor you know mm -hmm. and she can help you write the book right. you know because oh, yeah, that's good. always been a, a, a on the back of my mind is like how do you do it okay mm -hmm. it's, you're so good at writing and it's like I'm I'm so new at it yeah and it's like you know that way you know. Yeah. Us basic people who are starting off on first floor. Yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Still yeah. to give you some good information. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And and and, and yeah. then then you can also start uh mm -hmm. when you start having the thoughts, you know, mm -hmm. as as you continue on in life, you know. Right. You know, like uh through abuse or neglect mm -hmm. or whatever, you know. Right. And and how you felt and you know. And Okay. So anyway, well, Bob, you had to teach a writer's okay, workshop, mm -hmm. huh? You had to teach a writer's workshop. Yeah, huh? definitely. I'm serious. You've had the yeah. experience. Thank I'm you. trying to get my my old story rewritten from 1979. It's a little sci-fi novelette, and I can't tell you the plot because it's secret. Yeah. But I'm getting motivated by all this talent sitting in this room here. Yeah. I don't know of any other author that has produced as many books as you. Temple Grandin's behind you by, she's done 23 books in about 15 years. Okay. 
but she had a co-author to help her out recently. But mm -hmm. she wrote six veterinarian medical textbooks that would be way beyond what we could comprehend. But she wrote one for pet owners mm -hmm. and animal owners that I want to get my daughter because she loves animals. Yeah, your daughter loves animals. So do you, Richie. You got both. Yes. She, she learned it from you. I would be chicken at handling that beige and yellow striped snake, though. There was a picture of her handling that big snake, snake for what's now called Safari Schoolhouse. They take all kinds of interesting pets to the schools and libraries. First time I ever saw a bony tailed lizard. Mm -hmm. That thing looked weird. Mm -hmm. and then they had iguanas mm -hmm. and then Chameleons, Angela's favorite pet. I remember Rich's daughter when she graduated <laughs> from high school. Now she's living in Arizona with a boyfriend and they're getting married. Yeah. Huh? This end of December, she did a 15 foot wide mural of her pet chameleon specks and a lemur up in the upper left corner, a yellow and blue Amazon parrot on the right that looks like it's moving in the air, a tree frog in the lower right, and the most amazing blue frog, which I didn't think existed until we went to Aquarium of the Americas, and there it is. Mm -hmm. Never thought those things existed. And then she threw in some pitcher plants, and there's a hidden praying mantis, and mm -hmm. I'm sure there's other things, but yeah. that has been sitting at Ove Como High School since 2013, that mural. Yeah. Okay, thank All you. All in her head. Thank you, Rich. Yes. Let me go back to me and you in the hospital in Lafayette. Uh, my friend, Richard Phelps, my friend and co-host of my TV show, were in the hospital in Nueva An African-American male came up to me and asked me if my name was Chase. Well, I used a different name. And I told him yes. We shook hands and he told me his name. He said we had been in the mental hospital at Fort Polk at the same time in 1970 and wow. asked if I remembered so. And so he picked me up how he would, how people would pick on me and he would protect me from anyone who picked on me. Richard and I talked to the man for a while and then we also left. Like myself, he had discovered God and now was a preacher. I yeah. as a ha I was happy for him, but as God is my witness, I didn't remember him or any of the people he talked about. I guess I was so out of it and sick that I really didn't remember much of my hospital stay, except what I had mentioned earlier. Well, what blew me away is he recognized you after almost 50 years. He probably recognized my voice. You know, I have a that, distinct yes, voice. Yes, you do. He Lady, remembers you being under the record player listening to all kinds of records. Yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would, uh, Lucy, listen to this. They had a record player with vinyl records. And, you know, you could listen to the music. It was on a table and... In, in the music, in one of the rooms, you know, with other tables. And I would lie under the table, put on a record like Jefferson uh, Airplane, Star Airplane uh, uh, a surreal, surrealistic, surrealistic pillow, and I would listen to the music, you know. And I listened to that for about a week and a half. You know, I was there for six weeks. And then one day when I went to lie down, somebody had taken my spot. Oh, man. <laughs> I had started a fad. <laughs> really? Yeah. God. But anyway, uh, like I mentioned early in my book, no, no, no. Ladies and gentlemen, one quarter of the population have a mental illness, and it's a horrible illness to deal with, especially in today's world where it seems like it's every man for himself and the heck with the other God. It's a me, me, me world society and according to the Bible and God's teaching, it won't get any, be any better. I know life can be rough at times where many of us get to the point where we don't know where to turn. 
If you are reading this and can identify with what I'm saying and you don't have a mental illness and still deal with tough times occasionally, well, I ask you to think of the mentally ill or one quarter of the population who have it maybe three or four times tougher than the average person. Like I've mentioned early in my book, and please don't shoot me for mentioning it again, uh -huh. many mentally ill persons live in abject poverty with the lucky ones collecting Social Security. But even with that small amount of money, they are classified, classified as poverty level. What I am trying to say is life is hard, but count your blessings if you don't have a mental illness. Remember, God made you who you are, and he is the author and finishing, finisher of your life. So pray to him and love your neighbor, because although I can't prove it, in my reality, prayer and love are the most powerful forces in the universe. Yes. And those two together with faith can help you live a good and happy life. And I'm, I'm a perfect example, Richard and Lucy too. Wow. Getting back to schizophrenia in its early phase, the patient often seem eccentric, unmotivated, emotionless, and reclusive. They isolate themselves, neglect their hygiene and appearance, say peculiar things, and show a general indifference to life. They may abandon hobbies and activities they used to do, and their performance at work or school. school. The most common early warning signs of schizophrenia or one social withdrawal been there, mm -hmm. hostility or suspicion been there, terrible personal hygiene been there, flat expression, inability to cry or show joy, inappropriate crying or laughing, depressions, oversleeping or insomnia, irrational mm -hmm. statements, forgetful lack of concentration, extreme agation to criticism, strange use, use of words of speech. Does that sound familiar, Lucy? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you. There are five basic symptoms of schizophrenia. Delusions, been there. Hallucinations, been there. Disorganized speech, did, did, been there. Disorganized behavior, been there. And negative symptoms. Okay. Uh, we, got, we got about eight or nine minutes left. I'll try to cover this. Delusion is a belief that others are out to get them. And ladies and gentlemen, Richard knows that I talk about that. I've been know? through that myself growing up as a kid. I went through a lot of bullying. Yeah. And because of my impaired vision, I got this mindset that there were, somebody would always be looking at me weird and thinking the worst of me. And, and you couldn't see their face. I couldn't really see their expression, so I just assumed the worst. Yeah. And with the bullying, a lot of times it was the worst. But yeah. Then I would go home and get depressed and didn't want to do homework. Yeah. Then my old man, God rest his soul, would hound me on homework. And I went through some serious self-doubt, depression, I flunked out of college, and I thought, oh, I must be just dumb and stupid. Yeah. And here I am now doing something that didn't even exist Yeah. 35 years ago. It's incredible. Uh, this man, ladies, is, this ladies and gentlemen, gets around being partially blind, and it's amazing how he can function, you know? I mean, uh, he with a phone, he can do things that nobody can do with a phone. You know, call an Uber. He's never alone. He can call Uber or Lyft and get wherever he needs to get. When you I know? can afford it. When he can afford it, right. yes. It's, it, of it's course, very, we know it's a money world, you know. We but, have a friend named Karen who's been doing the most colorful uh, creations on her phone, and she shares those. And I said, why don't you to put these up in art walk. And she has gone through some trials, but she's been an inspiration to all of us. I'm thinking, I'm talking about Karen Reed, if you're watching, we love Does your Does she watch drawing. the show sometimes? I don't know if she has. Yeah, she has. Mm -hmm. Yes, she has. She also- Hi, Karen, if you watch. She's also grown 14 foot tall sunflowers. Mm -hmm. They 
I mean, I swear you can watch those things grow. That's how big they are. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and okay, to, to change the subject a little bit, I would like to, to give kudos to my freedom group, my, the guys that I know went through freedom. You meant Mark, Zoda, and David, okay. you know? Then there's Randall, and then there's Patrick, and, and, uh, and Mark, or you met Mark, I, and I think that's the group, you know. And and uh, and I would suggest uh, if you're going to church, you know, you try, you know. Uh, I've learned, you know, I've always been alone, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I've never known love really. You know, my mom loved me and knew that, but that's all I've known with love. Uh, you know, nobody ever wanted me, was interested in me. But you know, I, I enjoy this church. It, it's affiliated with Our Savior's Church, you know. Mm -hmm. And and if you are going to a church, it would be good to get into a Bible study, you know, to get connected. They all at, at Our Savior's. They always talk about getting connected with people. Yeah, yes. You know. Don't have you heard that before? Yes, Richard? yes, I have. And. There's another group called Celebrate Recovery. Can you talk about that real briefly? Yeah, Celebrate Recovery is at, uh, where is it at? The Bayou Church. The Bayou on Kali Church Saloon. on Kali Saloon, yeah. And, and, and that's a get together of Christians and, you know, they have a meal and they have a, a, a different uh, agenda, uh, you know. And, and that's a good thing. And I hear know? they are at some other churches in the area now too. You just, Best thing to do is to go to startpage.com, which is safer than Google, and I don't work for them. Mm -hmm. Type in celebrate recovery, comma, Lafayette, Louisiana. And, and, and ladies and up. gentlemen, we're not pushing religion on anybody. I just know that if, you know, when Mike Fusilier led me to the Lord, I was in such bad, bad shape, you know. Like if somebody told me they wanted to talk to me, I would. Fear, my, my mind would well up in fear like mm -hmm. a 250 pound man was coming at me with a knife. That's how much the fear was, you know? Mm -hmm. These illnesses are really tough and it's my faith in Jesus Christ that has given me a new life and has made me able to, to live in this world, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, I would suggest if, 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 if you don't believe in God, like I said before, ask him to show you that he's real. I guarantee you he will by, uh, by somebody talking to you or by, uh, by something you see on TV or, or a preacher or something, you know? And, and then to try to find a church, you know? Talk to a friend, you know? Who has, it was an empathetic ear, you know? If you want to vent your feelings, or you can talk to a pastor or something, you know. Right. And church is not the building; it's the people. It's the people that are willing to share their lives and what difference the supreme being has made in their lives. And there's a book, "Wrestling with Your Inner Angels," written by a psychologist who is also a nun, who started a spiritual support groups and this is back in the mid 80s in New Jersey wow. and such they tr they were skeptical but mm -hmm. she saw those groups flourish mm -hmm. without pushing religion on people it was spirituality it's spirituality and that's that's ladies and gentlemen that's what has saved me you know if it if it wouldn't have been for that I would have smoked myself smoking four packs of cigarettes a day 20 years ago, I, w I would probably be dead. And if I wouldn't be dead, I would be sitting in a rocking chair in a mental institution, just looking at the walls, staring blankly at the walls with no mind, rocking back and forth like that, you know, in a catatonic state, man, you know. And that's what spirituality and Jesus Christ can do for somebody. And how, I call my spirituality Jesus Christ. And know? how many pounds have you lost this last month or two? Oh, uh, I, 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 I got into bodybuilding. We forgot to, we're going to show a picture next week. I'm going to be in the Louisiana State Bodybuilding Championships, State Bodybuilding Championships, 
on the 13th of July. And, and, and uh, we'll show some pictures uh, next week, you know, maybe. Uh, and I hope to do well. I'm, I'm new to it. I was a power lifter, but I gave it up because I'm too old to power lift. You know, I can't seem to be, I can't see myself picking up 300 pounds where I might snap something at oh, yeah. 70 years old. So ladies and gentlemen, that's my new direction that I'm going to. I still lift weights and all that, but uh, you know, uh, you know, you just got to go out there and do your heart's desire, yes. you know, and, 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 and just pray. Pray the mo two most powerful forces in the world are prayer and love. Uh, so uh, just go out.